Spare paying for his unban. Spare certainly had a controversial past from restrictions to cheating allegations, but nowadays, he's regarded as a legit player because he has set these insane plays at LAN events with people watching him and he also streams often on Twitch. In terms of paying for the unban, I was unable to find any real evidence because the tweet is since deleted, but it is agreed from the community that he has paid for the unban in 2016. The amount ranges from $50 to $100. And that the truth is, he paid for support to look at the appeal faster, not for a guaranteed unban right away. So in short, staff didn't unban him for the money right away, but it certainly encouraged him to look at this case faster. Rohulk Before anything, Rohulk has changed as a person since and has learned his lesson. This is only included because it is from the original Iceberg posts made on Twitter. In June 2017, Discord DMs were leaked showing Rohulk talking to a 13 year old girl inappropriately and infamously the video that I'm sure we all know about was also sent to the girl, making Rohulk a pedophile and essentially causing him to be cancelled and hated. During this time, Rohulk still continued to post videos of his plays, and even though they were receiving a negative like-dislike ratio, he still put him out, nevertheless. Some people still respect him for the plays he makes, but Rohulk's actions were just too much to be swept under the rug. Eventually though, time moved on and he learned his lesson making it for the top 10 global and receiving a positive like-to-dislike ratio. Recently, Rohulk went live on Twitch and received massive support from the community, welcoming him back to Osu. However, it is not a permanent stay, as he just wanted to stream off Impulse and is busy with university these days, and also with no time to play anymore. Cookie Z is in military. On May 24th, 2020, a Reddit post was made titled Cookie Z Appreciation Thread. The post is about his legendary performance in Osu, which will be unrivaled for years and years to come, about just how ahead he was in his time. Plays like his Freedom Die 4 Dimension Hidden Hard Rock FC, which is likely to never be beaten in Osu, is just a fraction of what he's accomplished in this game. Nowadays, he has quit and moved on to complete military service. This paired with the chance that he may never return to the game ever again. Speed is genetics. Players like Zestiny and Mirami are seemingly able to stream extremely high BPM without much effort at all. When talked about how they are able to stream so fast, Players default to the argument that speed isn't about practice and skill, but merely just genetics. As Carthy mentions in a Reddit post about genetics, it's only partially a factor in how slow or fast you improve. However, hard work outweighs genetics. Carthy is proof of all of this, as his speed is the accumulation of hard work and consistent practice. So basically, genetics only plays a factor of how slow or fast you improve, but in the end, it is the result of hard work that truly displays your OSU skill. D-Rankers Internees As of today, Digital Hypno has 22 badges, which is the most out of any OSU player in the world. This is because he plays internees, where the highest rank is 1000 plus, and his skill is much better than a player, below the top 1000. Also note that it's not just him and there are other players, but Digital Hypno is just the best example of a D-Ranker. So why are people hating on Digital Hypno? The reasoning is that he should be playing internees with top players like an OWC, and not just 4 digits where he has some unequal opponents and can just easily sweep the competition. They say he should be straight up just banned from playing in the 4 digit only tournaments and only allow him to play in tournaments with top players. However, eventually, a solution was found to fix the problem. In 2020, BWS Rating, a badge weighting system, was introduced so that D-Rankers like Digital Hypno was placed at a high rating, making the matches that he plays much more fair. Masita cheated, despite being the best flashlight player legit. Who is Masita? Masita was regarded in the OSU community as the best flashlight player in OSU, during 2018 at least. Nowadays we have FG Sky. His consistency on flashlight back then was unmatched and no one could even get close to beating one of his scores. But when someone is too insane in the game, suspicions are just bound to arise. People were accusing Masita for his amazing flashlight plays on maps like Gold Dust Flashlight and Emerald Sword Flashlight because they were just way too good for his time. They say he used two monitors to play flashlight which uses your main monitor to play in real time and the other monitor to show a replay of the map without flashlight. While this is still pretty difficult, it is not as hard with one monitor and it is almost impossible to detect it. Another way people have accused Masita for cheating is the use of gamma to remove the effect of flashlight entirely and this was only possible on the older clients back then. This would allow Masita to be able to produce these insane flashlight scores essentially without even playing flashlight. While there is no proof of this happening, it is a possibility that can never be found out since all of the old flashlight scores from leaderboards remain today. Also, his low play count at the time just made it look worse for him, and while it could mean that he played offline, people weren't so sure about it. 
He has posted live plays before on his YouTube channel, the most recent one having a difference of 6 years in between. I would say it's better to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he is legit, since there is no concrete evidence proven in his replays that he's cheating. But what is your opinion? Smoothie World Chihuahua Incident Smoothie World was a top 100 player in 2016 and a well-known mapper in 2017, and also hosted tournaments. However, behind the scenes of a seemingly innocent and well-respected member in Osu lies a rather unpleasant secret. To get more information on the Chihuahua incident, I was told to DM someone that knew what exactly happened with Smoothie World and its pets. I was linked to an Imgur collection, and while I have some words censored out for obvious reasons, I also read a little bit of it. Three dogs and two cats. I have left my dog with me before, but I'm too scared to blank in her blank. I got my first blank to a yellow lab. I have helped my chihuahua a few times. So yeah, at first I thought this was a joke, that anyone would do this to their dog. But you know, now I am mistaken. And even though it's just Discord screenshots, why would everyone in the community be saying that it is true that Smoothie Bro did this to his dog? Nowadays, his name has vanished from Osu, and aside from a questionable fact about him, he was a pretty well-respected player. Wowie has schizophrenia. All I could find about the matter is that Wowie has publicly announced on Twitter that he does not have schizophrenia. Carthy on steroids. In 2019, word was being spread around that Carthy was using steroids to boost his Osu performance. He publicly debunked this rumor and had to say this on the matter. Carthy does indeed use steroids, but they are not anabolic steroids, which would increase testosterone to maybe help boost OC performance. It's honestly not recommended at all, and provides him more harm than good. He takes corticosteroids, which help his lung and heart problems that he has, not to have him be able to obtain more speed in OSU. Carthy has also said they have helped his motivation to play though, and to approve of OSU, stop being lazy. Biko was cheating. Biko is an anomaly in the OSU community, and he started out in 2010 as a touchscreen player. Then, he came back in 2015, setting some of the best hidden hard rock accuracy plays like Senketsu no Chikai SS and Helix SS his first try, then logging off and disappearing again. Biko and other people have stated that he is an offline player, and that he only logs on to Bancho to set his plays that he's been practicing offline. Now this was quite a controversial way of playing however, since Biko has never posted a live play anywhere and the switch of playstyles came out of nowhere and made him look very suspicious. In a video by Willy titled The Mystery of Biko, Spazza17 pointed out how he never shakes an Osu, having his aim look robotic, and even Idki, one of the best nerve control players in the world, still has shaky aim whenever he's nervous. There's a lot of valid points to be made about Biko cheating, but his account is still unbanned to this day. Nolly and Missile Strikes the date is May 4th, 2019. A well-known Osu streamer from Israel named Nalian is having an ordinary live broadcast on Twitch. Nothing seems to be wrong at the moment, except for one thing, his location. To people who live in a relatively safe area, missile strikes, acts of terrorism, and violence never really cross their mind and there is no need to worry about it. Israel is generally a safe place, but due to its location in the Middle East, there can be some exceptions. Oh, okay, I'll be right back, right, guys. Adderall usage. If you don't know what Adderall is, basically, it's a prescription drug to treat ADHD and the effects of it are that it increases your ability to pay attention and stay more focused. In terms of for playing games on Adderall, people that don't have a prescription can use it to perform better than they usually would in video games. One of the more infamous examples is the C9 CSGO Adderall scandal when they used Adderall to boost your performance for a tournament. A Reddit user from Osu who's prescribed with Adderall has said that the fear of choking on a map from nerves totally disappears but their heart rate skyrocketed and their aim was incredibly shaky. So in short, don't do drugs and you'll live a long life. Baidu Forums Baidu is basically a Chinese Google and Baidu also owns Baidu Taiba, which is the largest Chinese communication platform. The most talked about topic on Baidu appears to be League, so a big part of Baidu Taiba is video games. Osu has a section in Baidu too, and at first glance it doesn't seem too strange. But there are some odd posts that may have gotten translated wrong on here. 
a strange picture called He is not a girl with the title Lucifer's taunt. My classmates just don't fight me, STD. He forced me to scold my mother and the two rookies pecked at each other or I was better. I went to a bunch of shops and played all night without making any progress. Envy classmates into the pit. At least there are classmates in the pit to play together. Osu is doomed if it gets too big due to legal reasons. Osu is a free to play game with a wide variety of beep maps and music to play. The topic of copyright is always in the back of rhythm game developers, and because of Osu's relatively small community compared to other games, it's managed to pretty much go under the radar. There have been some copyright issues, but Peppy responds quickly to the demands and the beat maps are taken down very quickly. However, with the Osu Bloodcat beat map manager, players can still access these taken down songs. Now the reason I don't think this is too much of an issue is that Osu has been noticed by big names like PewDiePie, Ninja, and a sponsored tournament from Logitech, Osu. While it isn't the biggest game, its presence certainly exists between a large amount of people. If copyrighted songs weren't that much of an issue, the big names that have made Osu bigger would have caused several problems, like pretty much all of the beat maps being removed from the game. Also, being a featured artist in Osu actually increases your fan base, as people might enjoy the songs from Osu they play, and I just see it as a win win situation for featured artists. But what is your opinion on this? AI mapping. With the advancements in technology comes the expansion of artificial intelligence as well. Basic jobs like retail and fast food workers are already starting to see some replacement in the form of AI. Agony5757 wrote an auto Osu mapper that uses the MP3 audio file to create beep maps. Right now, the maps don't look that good, but with time, they can get to the point where it might become the norm in Osu. And also, since most farm maps are pretty much the same thing anyway, it's certainly not impossible. Elliot Roger was top 1k. Now if you don't know who Elliot Roger is, he was responsible for killing 6 people and injuring 14 near the campus of California Santa Barbara, then killing himself. Now the fact that Elliot Roger even played Osu, let alone was in the top 1000, is very far-fetched. But you never know who you're talking to on the internet, or what their real intentions are when you're talking to them. But hey, I might be playing into this iceberg a little too much. Who knows? I I Ultimate True Identity From looking up I I Ultimate's name on Reddit, he seemed to be an annoying ship poster in r slash Osu game, and half the people were happy to see him gone, and the other half thought it was unfair and thought that he wasn't causing any real harm to the subreddit. In terms of his true identity, I don't think anyone really knows except that he's just some reddit user who used to post memes. It could be more, but honestly, it's not really that important. How Water Paid for the Hummus All I can find is a Twitter account with the name of Fser, who I assume is known as an Osu player, who arbitrarily says, How Water Paid for the Hummus. How Water was an anomaly in his own. He was a top player in 2018, but then submitted a cheated 3 month scoring gangsta, I assume, to ban himself from Osu. After that, he created a Fortnite channel called Howl. Currently, it is at 251,000 subscribers on YouTube. The videos are deleted now, but they amass well over a million views each. So yeah, pretty cryptic, but I can't find much in this one. The Mr. Boom Method The Mr. Boom Method has been referenced from Marami. I assume it's a higher level of thinking that allows you to perform more efficiently in Osu. As we see here, the Mr. Boom method is implemented in full effect. People who ask what the Mr. Boom method is are told that it is kept in secret, as the revealing of it will be detrimental and certainly fatal. Marami Notepad Cheats OD In 2016, Osu had a minor oversight from how the beat map files worked that allowed players to edit the values externally from a map and submit their score with these edited values. Essentially, approach rate, overall difficulty, and things like this were able to be changed using Notepad allowing, for example, someone to play an AR11 map on AR9.3, and it would look just like AR11 still from the replay. It was patched later in Osu's development, but the fact that Marami used it is certainly far-fetched. Fail Screen IRL Dick Chappie, also known as Eru, has given his prayers to the Fail Screen IRL. When you fail in Osu, you've lost all of your life in your health bar. Similar to real life itself, when you lose all of your life, you are presented with the fail screen IRL, and you can choose to quit, retry the map, or watch the replay. Ayachi Nene's life play is legit, and he got hit by a bus. Ayachi Nene slash Amamiya 
was a top 15 OC player back in 2017. However, his name is not known anymore because he was banned for cheating. He has posted a live play before though, at a whopping 26 minutes. In his live play, he shows all of his custom designed pillows and then proceeds to boot up his computer. Now is this live play legit or fake? And in terms of getting hit by a bus, I don't know, it could maybe happen. Noodle Shredder is not a top player, he doesn't stream the fastest, but if you go to any map and select the mods Hidden, Double Time, Hard Rock, and No Fail, there's a pretty good chance that you will see him on modded leaderboard. And it's not just one map that you see him on, in this clip of Woei, he is found on 5 maps in a row, meaning all he does in Osu is play every single ranked map but Hidden, Double Time, Hard Rock, No Fail to solidify a leaderboard spot. What a legend. Peppy and Yandere Dev are half siblings. Peppy and Yandere Dev are known to be friends, as Yandere Dev supports Osu publicly. Their similarities are that they have both created a game, Osu and Yandere Dev. Both involve anime, and both games never seem to keep up with their promises involving game updates. If we compare them side by side, they don't look that similar, but it's whatever you want to believe for this one. Boy Does Gaming is legit. An absolute legend in Osu history. Around late 2017 and early 2018, Boy Does Gaming started to post live plays claiming he was able to produce scores that matched Cookie Z at the time. However, obviously, due to his young age, it was honestly hard to tell if he was memeing or genuinely trying to convince people that it was his gameplay. Nevertheless, the community thought that it was hilarious and Boy Does Gaming had accumulated a pretty decent fan base. Now, he was restricted in February 2018, and at first, people thought it was because Peppy was restricting people for creating fake live plays, which is pretty messed up. But Adept Osu says he was very close to Boy Does Gaming. And essentially, from his comment, Boy Does Gaming gave his account to a friend, and his friend hacked the account and then gave it back to Boy Does Gaming. So essentially, he multi accounted. But there is still one thing maybe he never cheated, maybe it was just a multi account, and he never actually inserted cheats into his game. Hashtag free boy does gaming. Biko was a Russian hacker that replaced Splice with homemade cheats. Remember earlier how I said that Biko is a legit player, which is very suspicious. Now, there's a theory that the reason for his high abnormal plays is that he has created homemade cheats and Splice to replace together. This theory would make sense. If a Russian user bought the account named Biko and submitted homemade replays on it, this would also make sense that the account never plays actively and only gets on his set scores and log out. Biko was known to be a touchscreen user in 2010, so to magically become one of the best hidden hard rock players, even today, 2015, makes this claim slightly more believable. Looking up this Polish file name, we can find a video of it made by Raffis. If you don't know Polish, you would have no idea what Raffis is saying. According to the comments, the title translates to stalactite of and was a Polish meme on Polish internet for two hours. And there's something about a bad politician too, I guess. Poland is quite a culture. North Korean private servers. As we all know, it's illegal for North Koreans to use the internet. The only people allowed to use it are government officials and foreigners. However, Osu does have a country listing for North Korea known as the Democratic Republic of Korea. Could this mean that North Koreans have just created an internal private network just to connect to the OSU servers? Or is it just people with a VPN that have connected to North Korea? Zia Relia is HVIC225. Zia is a double time top player in Taiwan. His skill set closely matches to the likes of the great HVIC225. Now, the reason why I think this even has a correlation to begin with is that HVIC225 was known as a magic girl by players, even though he's pretty much a guy. Zia is someone who dresses up as a girl, but is also a guy. A trap pretty much. It's a pretty funny similarity, but I honestly can't believe this one. Cookie Z was a bartender. Shigator has always been private about his life on the internet, so his job could be anything really. A male porn star, a drug cartel member, whatever one's imagination could really be. The only relation between Cookie Z being a bartender is that maybe we, he would serve milk at the bar. Because milk and cookies. Yeah, I don't have anything on this one. Alternate Dimension Eru. Eru is one of the most mysterious figures in the Osu community, even so that he has an ultra ego, Zeru. Zeru is obviously a meme account of Eru, but the topic of alternate dimensions can apply to anyone or anything in the world. 
Anything that exists in this universe could exist in another dimension or have a similar, totally different existence. If the two same beings from the same dimension meet one another, it could cause a rift in time itself and cause massive destruction. Keenan was always right. Keenan was regarded as one of the best speed players in 2015 and still maintains some relevance today. What overshadows his great level of play are his Twitter antics. To start off, Keenan recommends the juice. As I said earlier in the beginning of the video, Carthy is a genetic lung problem. Keenan's response to Carthy is that he should ignore what doctors are saying and to do this, eat less protein, drink his juice, which is made of 0.5% liters of orange juice, 5 bananas, 1 tablespoon of hemp seeds, 1 tablespoon of chia seeds. After Keenan sees that Carthy thinks he's wrong, he says good luck, maybe you can get another kidney. And Keenan is not afraid to message people either. Abyssal calling Keenan a dumb toad. And he responds with saying that he is literally overweight and that he should reconsider his life and use his brain real quick. The theory goes that Keenan's method of being healthy and drinking his so-called juice will remove all of your problems and instantly cure you. What do you think about this? Sapphire Ghost quick message was a suicide note. I'm not scared of death, for death itself is the end of fear. Sapphire Ghost 2015. Sapphire Ghost was a top US player in 2013 and has since now moved on from Osu. Now, one of the things he left behind is a note left on his user page on how he overcame his depression from quitting Osu. For it to be a suicide note is a very dark theory and topic. However, if one were to speculate, there are some points to make here. From Sapphire Ghost's quote, the argument can be made that not being scared of death anymore is a form of being open to suicide. Far-fetched, but let me keep going. The whole note from how the words are phrased, I am living happily, which can mean he killed himself and can be released from his depression and the tone of the words might give someone an off feeling. But he says that he's looking to a great future, and that there's a light and tunnel. This can also be interpreted as his great future, which is him moving on to the afterlife, which is his great future, and at the light at the end of the tunnel, it is heaven. Hopefully, and most likely, it's not a suicide note, and I hope Sapphire Ghost is still doing well to this day. Rainy Me is dead. Rainy Me is a top SS player from 2019, and they were able to snipe players like Toy and Hidden Hard Rock maps, and their playstyle gave Rainy a lot of notoriety back then. However, one of Rainy's friends announced that Rainy is dead. Then, Rainy came back a couple months later saying they are still alive and that Rainy's friends planned this all along, and that it was for attention to say that Rainy committed suicide. Quite understandably, the Osa community exploded and made memes and eventually someone doxed Rainy, giving out public information like address in high school. Iwaku made a detailed post about Rainy, and that it was 100% brought upon Rainy. Since then, Rainy is a flop. Notelock's true purpose. Notelock is a feature implemented by Peppy, and Rick Put explains it as the OD of a map is too low for the BPM, causing the hit window of the note to overlap itself, causing you to miss when you actually hit it. The origin of Notelock was to prevent hitting the note on the wrong key, and it still registers. And Notelock was created to patch this problem in the ancient times of Osu in 2008. However, it's certainly not a problem anymore because of the change in meta, but the outdated system of note lock still remains. A lot of people have complained about note lock and how unnecessary it is in Osu. And even Carthy has set some impressive scores on Osu Laser. And Osu Laser, while it still has note lock, is far better than the client we have today. Peppy has responded to everyone, saying note lock will stay until Osu Laser releases. It is theorized that note lock's true purpose is to prevent players from being so good and setting such high plays that eventually the game will turn from a rhythm game into a glorified whack-a-mole simulator. Wait a minute. Adrenochrome from Child Torture, used for stamina. Adrenochrome is a pro-Trump conspiracy theory that it is a psychedelic drug harvested from the fear of children. It's an easy to come by compound. And apparently, its use is to harvest fear of children because fear is what encourages kids to have energy. Now, even this for an Osu iceberg video is far-fetched. Like, how would stamina even help uh, from a psychedelic drug that uses the fear of children? Like, I have no idea, dude. Well, somehow, you guys stuck around all the way for the end of the video. I hope it wasn't too scuffed, man. And if you have any questions or any constructive criticism about this video, leave a comment below, as it is one of the first times I've tackled a project like this. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. See you next time.